Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to your Linux, open source and privacy news for the end of January 2020. This time we get a bunch of updates to the Linux kernel, to graphics drivers and to DXVK as always, but also some sad gaming news, some new computers and a few interesting initiatives. Stay tuned to learn about all of this. This video is sponsored by Linode. Linode provides Linux servers that make it super easy and affordable to host your own app, website or service right in the cloud. The interface is really easy to use and you can start your own server in just a few clicks. The best part is the one-click apps. Linode has a lot of services you can install on your server with just a click, like OpenVPN. Unlike third-party VPN services, using Linode and the one-click OpenVPN app allows you to keep total control of your data, privacy and security. For $5 a month, you can use Linode to host your own VPN and be certain that all your data is in your hands. Sign up for your free account today and get a $20 credit, which amounts to 4 months of free VPN, just by clicking the link in the description. January the 16th. Valve announced Gamescope, a project that seems to be some kind of window manager running on Wayland and optimized for gaming. While I'm unsure I got every technical detail right, it seems to be designed to increase gaming performance on Wayland by avoiding using the GPU needlessly and minimizing the number of times frames need to be rendered. It's still unclear where that project will be used, but it's going to be interesting to follow. XFC 4.16 will switch to client-side decorations, which means that the title bars won't be rendered by a window manager, but by the application itself. Don't worry, header bar haters, they don't plan to implement full GNOME-like header bars and will keep menus in their apps for the time being. This means, however, that window manager themes might disappear. Zorin announced Zorin Grid, a cloud-based computer fleet management system. While it's not out yet and its price is unknown, the goal of the tool is to provide an interface to help IT manage multiple computers, as in installing apps on all of them at once, or changing security policies, changing desktop settings, or setting the update policy. This is a very cool project that might help companies transition from a Windows fleet to Zorin OS. I reviewed Zorin OS 15 when it released and found it a fantastic GNOME implementation, very customizable and good looking, with the stability of Ubuntu LTS behind it. The Nuvo driver now has initial support for NVIDIA's RTX 20 series cards, such as the 2060, 2070 or 2080. While performance won't be on par with the proprietary driver, far from it, at least it should enable NVIDIA users to have a decent resolution when they install the distro and have a more comfortable experience installing the drivers. Manjaro, partnering with Tuxedo, announced multiple new computers, and customization seems to be the focus here. You'll be able to etch your own logo on the lid or on the super key and tweak the keyboard to your liking, even going as far as being able to use a Klingon keyboard for fans of Star Trek. I really like this customization effort, and since the computers are described as Dell XPS 13 killers, they should be interesting to follow. They also talked about making Ryzen computers available soon, which is always a nice thing, since AMD processors are starting to beat Intel at almost every turn. I'll be looking at these very closely and see if I can get my hands on one of these machines. January the 17th. KDE 5.18 should come with a new set of tools that let users opt in into some automatic feedback on how they use their desktop. This data collection seems strictly anonymous and is disabled by default. It will also be very granular in the amount of data users can send to the team. I think KDE has the right approach there, letting users decide if and how they want to contribute to the improvement of their system of choice. January the 20th. Ubuntu will get rid of the Amazon link that shipped in its stock by default since 2012. Ubuntu 20.04 Focal Fossa won't present this link to users anymore. Apparently, it did generate some revenue for the company, even though it exposed it to some backlash, even years after introducing it. All in all, I feel it's a sane decision, and I'm all for shipping a system with as little superfluous stuff as possible. The Kubuntu Focus can now be ordered online. The powerful laptop comes in a variety of configurations, starting at $2400 and some beefy specs, and can be tweaked up to 64GB of RAM and an RTX 2080 for $3600. It looks like a very powerful machine for gamers and creatives, and although the customizations that have been applied to the desktop don't really appeal to me, as well as the quantity of pre-installed software, it's really great to see more Linux hardware being available. January the 21st. Wine 5.0, the latest stable version of the Windows compatibility layer, has been released. It ships with support for Vulkan 1.1, the latest version of the API, as well as a full X-Audio 2 re-implementation, using F-Audio, and improved multi-monitor support. 
While the announcement is very short, Wine has been improving compatibility with a ton of games and programs, as the full release note indicates. Wine 5.0 will probably be used as a base for Proton soon. Proton VPN, the VPN tool from the makers of Proton Mail, is making all of its apps open source and undergoing an independent security audit. The goal seems to be to build trust, since VPNs know basically everything you're doing when you're browsing, it's vital to have a tool that users can rely on not to mess with their data. Nextcloud has become Nextcloud Hub, a full-on premises solution aiming to replace the likes of Google or Office 365. It includes a calendar, email and contact solution, as well as online file storage and sharing, and an instant messaging and audio-video conferencing solution all in one. The real improvement, though, is that it bundles only Office by default as an online collaborative document editing solution. It was previously possible to add only Office to a Nextcloud instance, but I personally never got it to work, so if they took care of the configuration on their side, it should make Nextcloud a really handy solution. I'll be looking at transitioning all the channel-related workflow over to Nextcloud soon, and maybe I'll make a video out of it. January the 23rd. The Free Software Foundation kicked off a petition to urge Microsoft to open source Windows 7. They're calling it upcycling, and it probably has no chance of ever succeeding. Windows 10 is built on the same foundation as Windows 7, as far as I understand, so open sourcing Windows 7 would probably expose a lot of code that is also used in Windows 10, which I don't see Microsoft open sourcing anytime soon. DXVK 1.5.2 has been released and now requires Vulkan 1.1, which means that very old graphics drivers might not be able to use DXVK anymore. It mainly fixes bugs for games like Vampire the Masquerade, Gothic 3, Dragon Age Origins and a lot more. Version 1.5.3 was released a few days later to fix a critical DirectX 9 regression and bringing fixes for Skyrim, Mafia 2 and Torchlight. Psyonix, developers of Rocket League, have announced they would terminate Linux and macOS support for their game. The games won't be updated anymore and won't be compatible with the Windows version going forward. This is a really surprising and unwelcome move, and one can only wonder if the fact that Psyonix was bought by Epic has anything to do with it. Players affected can request a refund, even if they played the game a lot. This decision is apparently the result of moving to a newer version of DirectX, and they are unwilling to make a move to Vulkan or DXVK since the game can be run using Proton and the Linux player base was apparently very small. January the 26th. The Linux kernel version 5.5 was released, adding support for BTRFS for RAID 1, improvements to the network I.O. and to connection quality for Wi-Fi, as well as support to add alternate names to network devices. It also adds a bunch of ARM SOCs, which can only help with single board computer projects and more phones to try Linux on. Graphics drivers were updated as well to add support for more varieties of GPU, including the ones found in the two categories of devices I just mentioned. January the 28th. Thunderbird has been moved to a new subsidiary at the Mozilla Foundation. As Thunderbird has picked up some interest and donations lately, Mozilla decided to give it its own home. This is nice to see since Thunderbird is an excellent email client, although its interface needs some love to look a bit more modern. The application will obviously stay open source and free and keeps the same team and schedule, so there's nothing to be worried about. It should just allow for faster hiring and independent partnerships. January the 31st. Nvidia has ended support for its legacy 340 series driver. This driver was meant to support older GPUs from 2006 to 2009 and while it will still work as long as it remains compatible with modern distros, it won't receive any updates. Let's hope the moves Nvidia is making towards open source means that the nouveau driver can pick up where the proprietary one left off. CERN, the European Research Center, has already moved away from Microsoft products and now they're replacing Facebook Workplace with open source solutions. They will move to Mattermost and Discourse, which are both great solutions. It's nice to see this kind of organization taking advantage of open source to help their work without the overhead of licensing fees and with more security and control of other data. And that's it for the news in January. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, don't hesitate to like, subscribe and turn on notifications. If you really did like the video, I have a Patreon page. I'll leave the link in the description below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.